going on everybody? Today I'm going to be reviewing a game called Fireball Island. This game came out in 1986 from the Milton Bradley Company and it is for two to four players. Now Fireball Island is a game that I like to call a grail game. This is a big time collector's item today. Um, the object of this game is you're trying to be the first player to get a red jewel and to escape from the island with it. However, it's not going to be as easy as you think. Number one, you've got to contend with fireballs, and you also have to contend with people trying to steal the jewel from you. And then you also have to contend with people playing cards on you and then using cards to help themselves. This is a rather cool game, guys. I'm going to show you how this one works. Okay, everybody, as always, I'm going to go ahead and show you the components. The first thing you have here is your big 3D board. Um, this board is pretty big. I mean, here's my arm, so it's about, I would say, at least three feet in length. Um, and it's really nice. It's a nicely, it's really nicely painted. Um, here you have marbles, and you have five of these marbles over here. Um, they are dispersed in different places throughout the board. And then there is one in Volgar's, which is this guy's mouth. And you will actually be able to shoot the marble out of his mouth if you get the chance to. These here are Explorer tokens. Um, I have two of them currently, and I got two more coming. And of course, you'll just pick one of these and then uh, play with it. Uh, this here is the red jewel. You are going to be trying to get this jewel and get off the island with it. And, and you're going to try to see if you can be the first one to get to the boat here with this jewel. And this here is Volcar. He's basically the big overseer of the island. And basically what he'll do is if you get an opportunity to shoot a fireball, you can shoot a fireball with him down here, down here, down here, uh, over in this area. These are the bridges. There's two of these. Um, the significance with the bridges is that you're going to have to stop on the bridge uh, no matter what you roll. So if you're here and you get a six, you're going to have to stop here on this bridge. And these here are your ruin tokens over here. There's four of these. If you pass this space over here, you're going to pick one of these up. And I'll talk about how those work too. And here we have the deck of Fireball Island cards. Um, in the beginning of the game, everybody is going to be receiving one of these, and you can hold up to four of these cards at a time. You can't hold more than four. So in the beginning of the game, you're going to go ahead and take this die, and you're going to go ahead and roll it, and you're going to move that many spaces. Now, if you roll a one, you are going to have to roll a fireball. And basically what happens, a fireball, you just choose one of these fireballs, and it will roll down the path that you choose, like so. If you or somebody else gets hit by a fireball, like let's say this happens, they are going to be sent to what is called the smolder pit. And there are different smolder pits. There's a smolder pit here, one here, one here, one here, and then there's one down here. It's not really a smolder pit. It's just a little rock you stand on. Um, whenever you get sent to a smolder pit, you're going to end up losing a turn. And then on your next turn, you're going to be able to exit out of the smolder pit and continue. And you'll just exit out where this little rock formation is. Now, if you land on any dark little space over here, you're going to pick up one of these cards. And I'll go ahead and show you uh, what the different cards are. There's several ones. Here's a card that says cancel any card except fireball card. If somebody plays a card on you that's not a fireball card, you can play this cancel card on them and negate the card. However, somebody can actually play this card on this card and negate that. Here's a card that says re-roll the die. If you end up rolling something that you don't like, you can just play this card and re-roll the die. Or, if you want to, you can play this card on somebody else that happens to, say, roll a fireball, and you don't want to throw, roll a fireball, you can play this card and re-roll on him. Here's a fireball card. If you play this card, you're going to basically roll a fireball uh, down the track. Here's a card that will stop the fireball. It's the Magic Talisman card. Here's a card that says, move any opponent back one space. You can play that on anybody. Here's one that says, you can move them back two spaces. Here is a card that says move ahead five spaces instead of rolling the die. So if you decide not to roll the die, you can just play this card. And here's one that will allow you to move six spaces. This card will allow you to take one card from any opponent. There is something you can do to uh, keep people from playing that card on you, and I'll talk about that soon. And here is a card that says double the next die roll. So if you play this card before you roll the die, you will be able to double that roll. And then you have take another turn after your turn. So you can take a turn, play this card, and take another turn. And finally, you have the fake jewel. Now, the way people can take the jewel from you is if they pass you on the trail while you have it. If you play this card, then they are not going to get the jewel. Now, the deal with the cards is, is that you can play these cards at any time. There's, the only cards you really can't do it with is, are the ones that will 
uh, replace a die roll, like move ahead five spaces instead of rolling a die. You can play that to help yourself. But all these other cards, like a cancel card or re-roll the die card, um, you can play a fireball card at any time, and you can also play as many cards as you want. So if you want, you can play a card that says move any opponent back two spaces, and then right after that, you can play a fireball card. So so long as nobody plays a cancel card on you, you'll be able to get those cards uh, to work. Now what you're going to basically do is you're just going to roll the die, and let's say I roll a six. I'll just uh, say I'm going, I'm going one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, and you're basically you're going to just move however many spaces um, that this die gives you until you get to the bridges. Now you can also take what are called caves. Let's say I'm over here and I roll a three. If I want, I can go ahead and move three, or I can go into this cave over here. This is labeled one. If I decide to do that, I will get to roll the die again. Now, there are six caves in this game. There's a cave here, one here, one here. There's one behind Volcar, which is a dead end. And then there is one here. So let's say I went ahead and rolled, and I rolled a four. So that means my character is going to go to the dead end over here. I don't know if you can see it, but he will go to this cave. Now, let's say I went ahead and I rolled a 5, and I ended up over here at this cave. So I've got a couple of choices. On my next turn, I can either say, okay, I'm going to go ahead and explore the cave some more, which in that case, I will go ahead and roll, and let's say I rolled a 3, I will go ahead and transport over here. Or I could say, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just move out of the cave. In that case, I would roll the die, and I would move that number of spaces like so. As far as these tokens go, if I end up going down this path over here and I land on this point or go past it, I will be able to pick up one of these Ruin tokens. Now what the Ruin tokens are for is if you can go ahead and play this at any time during the game, and when you play it, you will be able to replenish your hand up to four cards. If you decide to hold on to it, and let's say you end up getting the jewel while you have this card, what you can do is, is you can just put the jewel in the token like so, and then what this will enable you to do is this will protect you from a, the card that says take one card from any opponent. This will protect you from that card. Of course, you can also take this off and then play the token and then get your four cards if you decide to. So that's how the token works. So let's talk about how you can actually get to the jewel. Now, when you take these paths, you can go this way to get the jewel. You can go... You can go this way to get the jewel. So there's a few different options you have as far as trying to get to the jewel. You can check a cave to get there. Once you land here and get the jewel in your possession, there's going to be a few things that are going to happen. The first thing you're going to happen is that you're going to replenish your hand back up to four cards. The second thing you're going to be able to do is you're going to be able to roll a fireball unless someone plays a cancel fireball card on you. So just say, for example, that somebody's over here and you decide to roll the fireball. You can roll it and bam, they get knocked down. So that'll be a very helpful thing. One thing I forgot to mention, um, if you end up having to roll a fireball and nobody is in that fireball's path but yourself, you're still going to have to roll a fireball and hit yourself. And if it just so happens that, say something like this happens, you got a player here, you roll this fireball, this guy hits this guy, this guy counts as getting hit. Even though he didn't get hit by the fireball, he got hit by the guy who got hit by the fireball. The next thing that's going to happen is that this guy, the person who ends up getting the jewel first, is going to take three turns. You can either roll the die or play a card for movement. Now when he gets over here to the bridge, um, let's say I went ahead and I roll, I was over here and I roll a six. I'm going to have to stop on this bridge and I won't be able to cross it until my next turn. Now if there's somebody behind me and they end up rolling, say, a 5, they're going to be able to hop over me um, and move. So it would be like uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, whatever. Um, now, the big significance with the bridge is there's a lot of times fireballs are going to get rolled on this area. So let's say somebody rolls a 1, and they decide to roll this down. Knocks me over, and this is going to place me right over here. Now, in this case, I'm not going to lose a turn because it's not a smolder pit, so on my next turn I will be able to go ahead and continue on. Now, let's say I get fireballed when I have possession of the jewel. Let's say that I'm over here and somebody happens to throw a fireball down on me. What's going to happen is the fireball is going to be placed right in front of the smolder pit where I am at. So in this case, I would be here, and the jewel would be there. One way the jewel can get stolen is if uh, I end up getting fireballed and the jewel is available, and someone goes and picks it up, then they are going to get possession of the jewel. Now, the main way the jewel ends up getting stolen is when somebody passes you. So let's say this guy has a jewel in his possession. It's this guy's turn. He rolls a 
three or something. So we go one, two, three. And since he passed him, he will then go ahead and take the jewel. Now, if I ended up playing a fake jewel card, he would not get this. I would still have possession of it. If it turns out that I have the jewel and I end up getting fireballed on the bridge, the jewel is then going to be placed on the bridge. And again, it is going to be up for grabs. So what's going to happen is you're just going to be moving around this track and you're going to be playing cards on each other and you're going to be trying to get the jewel over to this boat. And the first person that actually gets over here to the boat with the jewel is going to be the winner. So my thoughts on Fireball Island. Well, this is a game that I've been wanting for a while and I finally managed to get a good deal on it on eBay after the Christmas holidays. Um, I really like this game a lot. Uh, my wife and I like it too. A good thing about this game is the game is really easy to teach and it plays great. Um, no two games are really the same. The cards are what make this game so cool because you can play as many cards as you want. You can stop your opponent. You can fireball your opponent. You can protect yourself. I mean, the combination of cards that you can play in one turn kind of reminds me of some of those fighting games where you have all these combos that you can do, like a punch and a kick. And wah, 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 wah. Well, it kind of reminds me a little bit of that. The 3D board is awesome. I love the 3D board. Um, I kind of figured that one of the reasons why this game didn't sell so well is just because of the sheer size of it. I mean, this is the biggest box that I have as far as all the games go. It is, it's big. I would rank this game probably about a six and a half or so uh, as far as the gameplay goes. Um, you've, there's a number of different ways you can get to the jewel. You've got the caves. You can go around the path. There's different paths you can take. The bridges really uh, make this game more challenging because you can actually play a card on somebody once they get on the bridge to move them back a space and then they have to go back on the bridge and they can't move until they go over it. So there's a lot of things you can do. I've had a lot of games that literally came down to the wire. I actually played a game last night where one person was like one space from the dock, another was right behind them. I happened to roll a high number and I actually ended up getting it just at the last second. So this game has a lot of cool elements to it. Um, if you happen to find this at a thrift store, if you're lucky enough, pick it up immediately. You don't even have to look inside. Uh, this game typically goes for around $175 complete, and that's about the low ball price. If you find an incomplete copy, uh, the good news is, is you can actually get some of the parts uh, 3D printed um, if you would like to, and it's a lot cheaper than actually buying the parts for the actual game because the actual parts sell for a lot. Um, but anyway, this is a really cool game. Um, if you like uh, big 3D board games and collector's items like this, this is definitely one to get. Anyway, that's my review on Fireball and you guys. You guys have a great one. We'll see you later.